engineer at I'm working as a principal engineer at Oracle. And when I'm not coding, uh, what I do is I do these kind of knowledge sharing sessions. I blog, I do meetup, I do tech talks. And this is something which is actually my passion where I love to share my knowledge and, you know, give away to the, give to the community. So today, what we are going to talk about is the beginner's handbook, handbook to front end uh, open source with women who code London. So there are two things which I'm going to talk about. The first thing is how to start with open source. And the second thing is what women who code is code London is uh, planning to do on the same. So agenda is what is open source contribution and their benefits. If you are someone who is very new for open source contribution and you are planning to do, because this is the month of October where the whole community celebrates and encourage everyone to come forward and do their first open source contribution. So this is the next 30, 20 to 30 minutes. I will try to make it easy for you. What are the skills required for open source contribution? How to do your first contribution? And as I told you, how uh, WWC London can help. So first thing is what is open source? So great things are done by the series of a small, small things brought together. This is a quote. And basically, this actually hold the whole uh, idea of open source. What you can do is you can contribute to your favorite product, project library framework. So if you can see on the left side of the screen, they are a bunch of logos. They are from, if you are a front-end developer, you might be able to recognize few of them. For example, React, Angular, Bootstrap, Vue, Express, all these are here. So if you are looking or working on any of this product or project, you can go ahead and you can start doing the contribution. The reason is because all of these are open source and they are looking for the folks who can come forward and help them. So open source in a very simple language means that come forward and help your favorite project, product, any library framework to grow and support them. Now, what are the benefits of it? There are a lot of benefits. In front of you, there are only few I have uh, just noted down. The first benefit is you will learn by doing. So they won't be like you are just doing, uh, following a tutorial or something. You will be actually doing the code or doing the contribution and learning through that. You can definitely add these open source contribution in your resume. And trust me, a lot of people actually get their good opportunity in their career through their open source contribution only. Sometimes the recruiters or the potential hiring manager actually look at the contributions on the GitHub. And if they see that you have done a bunch of good contribution and work, they will actually approach you. Third, your skills portfolio. If you are someone who is just starting in the tech career or you your full-time job is something else and you wanted to work on a, some particular skill, then you can do open source contribution because this is gonna be your portfolio. You can showcase that this is the work I have done. You will be learning from experienced developers. So when you do open source contribution, you are not alone. There are a lot of people who are in parallel working with you on the same thing. And they will be actually giving you the feedback or you will be learning from them because you can see their work, what they are doing. So you will be learning from experienced developers, not just in your, in your city, country, around the world. So diverse people come together and they do the contribution and you can learn from each other. It is fun and gives you personal satisfaction. I can talk from my experience. Yes, it is fun. Um, it's a personal satisfaction. The reason is if you wanted to learn something new and you are not getting that opportunity at your workplace or you know, somewhere else, you can do open source and you will get that personal satisfaction. When you do, when your first pull request get merged, you, you can get that happiness that yes, my work was so good that someone actually merged my contribution. And th yes, there is no monetary benefit, but that's the fun because you know that you actually give back to the community. So yes, it's fun and it gives you personal satisfaction. And you never know who is watching. 
um, as I told you that your potential next hiring manager or your teammate are looking at your contribution, future one, and they will reach out to you. And it happened if you will go and research on the open source and the hiring, you will see that a lot of people actually got hired through GitHub. Um, I can talk from my experience again. I actually got few leads through my GitHub where the people are reaching out to me that we have seen your work and we want to, you know, uh, talk about the potential uh, project they have and all. So these are only a bunch of uh, benefits, but there are more. You will see that with experience, how open source actually help you. As in the previous slide, I showed you all the projects. These are the projects which we developers are using and they are open source. So imagine you actually con gonna contribute to React.js repo and so many people are using. So you can think about one line of code or any open source contribution you are gonna do. What would be the impact of that, the scale of that? Now, obviously type of open source contribution might be code is not everyone's cup of tea. Might be you are just starting. That doesn't mean that you should stop yourself from open source contribution, no. There are different type of contribution every project looks for. So for example, if you are using a product and you are using it and you saw a bug there or you want a feature, what you can do is you can go to their repo. I will keep show you how what is repo and all. You can go there and you can create a bug or you can create a feature request. This is also a kind of an open source contribution where you are helping those product to know that there is a bug or there is a feature which is required. And then what will happen, the team behind that will do triage or they do their discussion that is this bug is there or not? If yes, then they will fix it. If the that feature is required or not, they will decide and then they will fix it. So these kind of things, uh, bugs or feature creation actually is, you can imagine, it, you don't need a coding for that. It just, you are using and you saw some bug or you think there should be a feature, you can go ahead and create that. Next is project management. Project management is also an area where a lot of open source project uh, look for, where you can come and you can help them in triaging the issues. So imagine a project is having more than 50 or 100 issues. Someone can sit and triage them that what is acceptable issue or not, or updating their labels. There are so many things required in project management that you, you will be surprised that uh, there is so much scope of that work. So if you are someone who just wanted to, you know, just drive the whole project, you can go ahead and start contributing there. Support, there's a lot of support required. Again, support could be of documentation. A lot of open source projects lack in good documentation. Um, I'm not sure if you have ever experienced this frustration. You want to use a plugin, you want to use a library, but their documentation is not great. So that's your window or that's your opportunity go ahead and write the documentation for that. So that kind of a support is required, as well as there are so many issues are open. There are so many PRs are open. You can go ahead and what you can do is, you can review their code, share your feedback. You can look at the bugs which got created and you can validate that bug is there or not. And if you found an issue, if you found a fix, again, that's your opportunity that you can just help that person that how to fix that. So these are the support one. Again, the code knowledge is not required. You can go ahead, do the documentation work. You can look at the issues, look at the PRs and support them. And the last one is definitely code. Um, you can go contribute with the code, help them in closing the bugs, help them in creating the new features. It is gonna help them a lot. So what I'm trying to show you by this slide is, do not stop yourself that I need to be a very perfect in code and then only I can do open source contribution. No, you can do contribution even if you are not a developer. If you found any mistake in documentation, text, typo, anything, go ahead and please uh, start doing the contribution. Even there is a demand of all the documentation which we have to be translated in different languages. So if you want a particular project 
documentation to be converted in your own language, please go ahead and start doing it. So these are the different type of open source contribution. Now, as I told you, different type of open source contribution on the top, this is the one um, repo or a project accessible web dev where I actually also contributed. You can see this is logo design. So the request was that can someone design a logo? Now see, this is not a coding uh, contribution. It is just a request that can someone design a logo for this project. So you can see on the, on the same screenshot, on the right side, there is a labels and you can see a blue uh, chip in which it is written design. So the labels help people like us to identify that which kind of issue is this. So if you are someone who are creative person and want to contribute, you can go ahead and you can contribute. And you can see that this issue is still open. It is. It was created on 3rd of May this year. It is October. It is still open. If you are someone who would love to do a creative contribution, please go ahead. Uh, this is a very good project. On the bottom, this screenshot I took from the React repo, from the Facebook React Cheers one. And I wanted to show you that this is a just a documentation update. So all they have done, sorry. Mm -hmm. So all they have done is they only updated the text. So don't get worried about red and green. Green means this is the content they have added. So again, this is a known, non, no code contribution. So these kind of the contributions are still there and you can do for the open source one. Now, what are the skills required for open source? GitHub account is a must. You should have your GitHub account. It's free. You can go. Basic Git is required so that you can do basic uh, commands like push, pull, commit. These are the basic ones. You can do it. If you will go on the YouTube, you can find the Git uh, videos where you will get like learn Git in one hour or two hours. You can just go through that and you will be fine with that. You need tech and non-tech skills. So tech, any programming skills. There is no limitation. JavaScript, Java, C++, Python, Rust, any programming skill will work. And content, if you are a person who is a content writer, if you are someone who is a tester and they want you to just test the application and log the bugs, you can do that. If you are very good in management, definitely you, you can also do that. And I already show you the designer one. If you are a designer, you can do that. So these are the skills required to do the open source contribution. Now, scary questions. What if my contributions get rejected? Genuine question. I can't understand any of their code. Getting starting with open source is overwhelming. Yes, it is. All these three questions and more than that are valid. When you will start your open source journey, you will have like a lot of such thoughts, but what you should be focusing on doing the open source contribution. Like I will tell you my story. When I started my open source uh, first contribution, I think it didn't got merged. The reason is because the maintainer didn't bother to review my PR and never came back. There were times when I also created bugs for different projects, but they never got addressed, which is fine. It is fine. As long as you are, these things are not stopping you and you are keep continuing doing that, it's fine. What you need to do is you need to look for the active projects who are looking for the active contribution. Now, from last few years, I keep checking my interest area, basically the projects which are of my interest. And I go there and I do the uh, contribution. Your contribution will never get rejected. You will only get the feedback. So even if you are, um, if you have done a, for example, this logo design, if you will design a logo and share it as a contribution, if the person didn't like it, they are never going to reject it. They will always give you the feedback that what are the changes they are looking for. And this is the beauty of open source contribution that you will always get the feedback. Same with the code. If your code is not correct, again, you will get the feedback. And all you need to do is just keep fixing that until it is in perfect shape. And that's what I actually mentioned that you will learn by doing and you will learn from experienced developers because the people also want that you should do contribution. So don't 
get scared by this if my co contribution get rejected no it is not gonna get rejected people are there the community is there to help you i can't understand any of their code it does make sense a lot of time that's why there is a readme of every project that you should first follow if still you are not able to follow their code you should tell the person like right now uh, i think few weeks back i was looking into the code of dev dev.2 the famous blogging platform and one of the person actually highlighted this that your code is very complicated for me so i'm not able to understand and the person who is the owner of that platform that person actually commented on that issue that these are the file you need to go here and this is how you need to do again what i'm trying to tell you people really want you to do contribution so they will help you out if you are not able to understand it's okay it's okay ask for help this is the rule which is a lot of developers doesn't follow so ask for the help people will help you out getting started with open source is overwhelming yes it is because it's a very wide space and you need to find the right project right issue right skills and also it should get your changes should get merged but what what you will see is there is a way to get your path out of that there is a way there is a direction which i can help you out there are a lot of resources available online which will help you in uh, your open source journey so don't hold yourself back just go ahead and start thinking not thinking i would say start doing your open source contribution now what we are doing we are actually encouraging that the uh, communities code and contribution should come together and this is what that's why we are having this conversation where we are going to help you with the open source as well as we want to support you how we, i'm going to talk about that in a while uh this is a slide which is very important i will give you a demo but uh what you can see is this is woman who code london even if you are not thinking about you know contributing to woman who code you decided to contribute to any project um any project what you need to do is first check the website or check the product look for their github repo this github repo is very important because if there is a github repo it means this is a open source project they are sharing their code with you then go to their repo look for the contribution guidelines why contribution guidelines because that will actually help you that how to start that if the if they have some rules around contribution coding guidelines tools and all that you will get there so read their contribution guidelines and check their readme why readme because in the readme you will get the steps how to start that project on your local system and then go for the issues tab i will show you the demo so wait for this right now after this presentation if you will click on these links you will reach to the women who code london website repo and our contribution guideline and we will encourage you that you can start your open source contribution from there also we will be there to help you out so if you need any help and you don't want to go out and search for any new uh, repo you can we have done this work for you links are with you now how to find your first contribution this is the github issue tab always go for the issues you will see all the open issues there and look for the labels lot of open source uh, project use labels like good first issue where they want the first if you are a first time contributor for them they want that you can pick this and then you can have different label also like we are using help wanted that we really want the help or if they are like a uh, triage is pending or they are different basically every repo follow different labels but these labels are your um, yeah go gonna they are like your guiding uh, they will guide you that which one you can pick or if you will feel you will find issues without label it's okay read the issue and see if you can do it go ahead and do it okay now i what i will do is i will just stop for a while to share the few demos with you not few demos so this is what i was i wanted to share so this is the repo we are here go for issues now you can see this is these are the 19 open issues and all these issues you can see prefix is coming that these are the feature because we decided to have 
these kind of templates. So you, you might end up with issues where you might have just one liner that fix this issue or fix this documentation. And you can see that we are also using the label here that uh, good for newcomers, study group, and all this. These labels will help you. If you will go inside, you can read the detail that what this particular issue is about. Now, if you have any question on this, you can comment here. Go ahead and comment and ask what you want to ask if you don't have if you don't have the clarity. And what you can do is just let them know that you are gonna work on it. So what the maintainer of this repo will do is here in assignee, they will assign it to you. And then you can go ahead and work. Now, why this is important? So that no two people will be working on the same issue. So it's very important to let them know that can you please assign this issue to us and so that they can assign it to you. And once you are done, what you will be doing is you will be raising the pull request and how your pull request will look like, this is how it is gonna look. And um, one more thing I wanted to show you, if you can see there are 10 comments, this is what I wanted to show you, that you will get feedback and feedbacks are good. The reason is the, this is mine actually. Yeah, I think this is mine only. The feedbacks are good because I am also learning from my experienced dev, uh, developers that what is required. And here as a developer, uh, another important thing comes is, I can, I, again, this is for me. I My communication, my written communication is improving because we, we are not jumping on a call to discuss this issue and all. This is our open source contribution. This is we are doing in our free time. So whenever I am typing, I have to explain that what approach I have give, taken. If there is there is follow uh, they are follow sorry there are questions around that, then I have to explain. So you can see that the we are having these discussions. So these discussions are very good. These are the learnings. So don't worry that oh my god, so many comments came. You are actually learning and you are expressing yourself. Okay. I'm sharing these things because I have seen that a lot of people actually get scared when they get uh, feedback, but please take it as a positive sign. So yeah, so issues is your place. Once you are done, pull request and you will be getting the comments. Don't worry if it is gonna take a lot of time to get merge, please respect other people time also. Everyone has their full-time job or they have life. So whenever they get the time, they try to review and they try to merge it. So commenting again and again, can you please merge it? Can you please review it? I'm not sure if it is gonna help. Uh, so respect that. Or if you felt that uh, this is how the people are gonna respond and you have seen this, I, I'm not sure, I don't, I would suggest don't do this. Uh, don't push anyone, just, just give, give a polite reminder, that's it. So this is how you have to do it. And another thing I wanted to show you is the website, our website. So now imagine you are not a coder. What you can do is you can visit our website. See if you face any issue, if you see any bug, or if you have any feature to suggest, then all you need to do is come here and click on new issue. And you have these two options. It will be different as per the repo. If I will go to another repo, they might not have this option. They might have directly a new issue you can log. So you can go and create it. So if you will see all these issues, this is how we created it. So mentors number of sessions, please be very clear what you are writing and try to understand we are not gonna come on a Zoom call or a video call or something. So your text should be very clear so that any person can understand and never leave this area blank. It should be very descriptive. A lot of time, rappers will have template that you need to follow. If there is no template, still you need to put a very clear title and very clear description. This will help you and help others also. So again, this is a website. You can go play around with it. If you find any issue, this could be your first contribution. You can file a bug. Or if you want to have any new feature, you can log that. That is going to help us. Now, let me click here and let me open a bug report. So if I will click here, get started, you can see this template is coming. So what it is asking is describe the bug. So you can describe the bu that bug, how to reproduce, 
what is the expected behavior, screenshot. If you can provide these information, great, very straightforward. Now these might be on smartphone. These things are not required. So you can do any or you can leave it blank. It's okay. And this is how you will send all the details. And then you can do the submit new issue. And this, this would be your first contribution. So again, I'm repeating the same thing. Please go and play around with our website. And if you find something, please let us know. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Now, what we are doing is we are doing a front-end study group. What this group will be focusing on, it will be focusing on the Git fundamentals, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, jQuery. You will learn GitHub pages. You will learn unit testing. You will learn integration testing. And how we are going to have the study group, we will be actually doing it by learning. Which, which means is that we will be assigning some issues to you folks. It could be a bug. It could be a feature. And the mentors will be with you to help you and guide you how to fix or how to do that work. So there will be mentoring session. There would be workshop. And at the end, the goal is that we can help you to start with your open source contribution as well as you can learn by doing the front-end skills, which are the fundamentals, HTML5, Git, CSS3, JavaScript, jQuery, testing, all these things. And the same things you will be learning from experienced developers who are also passionate like you. Uh, they also want to share their knowledge. So that will happen. Having said that, it doesn't mean that you cannot do open source contribution. Joining study group is a separate. Doing open source contribution to women who code or any repo are separate. So if you don't want to be the part of the study group, it's fine. You can still go and do the open source contribution to Women Who Code or any other project of the world. There is no like, uh, there is no uh, partnership like this. I think that would be the word. So we are planning to start with 18th uh, of October. Uh, you can apply here. You have this QR code. You can scan that and then you can apply. So, yeah, so you can start contributing from now. I already shared the website of Women Who Code London. You can play around with that and do that. GitHub account is important. So please create your GitHub account. It is free. And thank you so much for giving me your time. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, anything, please let me know. I would be happy to help. Thank you, Neha, for your time, for the uh, very nice uh, talk. It was very... I say excited because I, I'm doing contribution and also it's really nice to know other opinion perspective and thank you so much. I think if you have any question, uh, you can uh, probably give them uh, here in the chat or if you are interested to, to say something, you can tell. What I also want to, I will look for the link and we will share with you in the community if you want to, to join to the start group. But as Neha said, you can just uh, join uh, by sending us a message on Slack and we can invite you to, to, to join us. Like um, if you know something, if you want to learn something out of the start group or out of the, the, the issues that we have in the repository, just, um, talk to us and we will uh, support you in the process of that. Um, okay. Uh, what is the good way to find an open source project that are approachable, uh, Neha? Yeah, so there are a few tools which actually help you. I'm sharing one in the chat. So goodfirstissues.com. You can go there and you can start searching. Um, let me also help you in. Let me do the screen share. So if you will see this website, Good First Issues, there are many actually like this, where you can go ahead and you can search for the first issue. I found this one, no bias. You can also Google and you can get any website like this. So if you are looking for HTML, you can just select this. Uh, like right now it's October. So Hack October Fest is going on. And if you are planning to contribute in that, you can just select this filter and you can see all these are coming. 
uh, this is for HTML and uh, this is for uh, yeah Hack October. So these folks are actually uh, providing the uh, look open their web repos for the contribution. One thing is it depends upon the personal preference. Like I have seen a lot of developers, uh, a lot of contributors directly want to uh, directly want to contribute to the big projects. Uh, it depends upon your strategy, how you want to start. Like when I started, I, I was like very fear, very afraid of going directly on the big projects. So I started with the small projects. Uh, it depends upon you. If you wanted to go for directly for the big projects, then what is your technology you are looking for? If you are very specific with that, you can directly go there. I am uh, I am an accessible accessibility advocate. So I actually wanted to contribute to the accessibility. So what I did is I actually went ahead and I found the big projects and I, I figured it out that it is not gonna work for me. The one screenshot which I showed you, that's, that's a lady who is doing a, her own personal project on accessibility. And I actually decided to contribute there. It's not a very big project, but it's a good way to start and help other people to build their project. So why I'm saying that, that you can see these stars, like 84 stars, like 84 people are there. When I started contributing in that project, there were 100 stars only, but it was a great learning. I actually contributed to a very good project. So this is how you can start. Uh, does it help? I think so. It's very good, at least for me. I, I didn't know that website. Um, uh, I have another question that I, I can take that, I guess, uh, that you asked uh, if, uh, let me see, where is it? Um, this start group sounds awesome. Uh, if we can talk a little bit more and if uh, can be joined from Seattle. So I think there is no um, limitation mm -hmm. to join the um, uh, the start group. Uh, what we plan to do is like uh, we can find a person that can support you, or if you can pick up uh, some issue, and then we can coordinate someone to support you in the process. That could be online, can be asynchronous. So we can make that happen. It's uh, just about. Uh, because there will not be a tiny fix it for that. It will depend on the volunteers, how many people will be available and uh, different type of issues. We can coordinate that. But first, we just need to know who will be interested and then we make a plan to organize that. So for example, if you are interested to support with automation, with a unit test or all of that, we can kind of reorganize this third group on that focus. Um, but. Uh, it, there is no limitation on that. You can join from everywhere. Of course, time zone is a bit of problem, but uh, we can try to make that happen. Even if it's not like uh, everyone at the same time together, we can find a mentor or someone to support you in the process with uh, some of the topics. Just talk to us. I, I am sharing the link um, here from our Slack that you also can join. And... Um, we can give you more details on that. Um, one thing that uh, if uh, we still have some minutes, I'm not sure, let me just check if we have any more uh, question here. If not, I would like maybe if you want to drive or I can drive there to go through the guideline, which I think maybe would be nice uh, to say that we should not, uh, we don't have access to the repository. So we should fork the project and then create the pull request from the fork and this is how it is done. So I can uh, quickly uh, share just some details because I think if you just want to start right now, you can do it for many projects. One thing that I would say is just what you have to do, you have your own GitHub account and then as you can see here, you can just press uh, create a new fork and this fork will be in your private account and when you do that, uh, then you will be able to create your um, pull requests from your own account. If you see here from the closed ones, uh, for example, uh, la, 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 let me take um, here. So you see here that was from uh, the Eleonora GitHub account, and then she has this branch on. So 
don't be scared by that. I don't want to scare you out on that. But uh, this information is here in the contribution in the link that Nehela will share with you. And we have all details here, which is very, very important to you to contribute to any open source a project that uh, this guideline that Nera mentioned. And that's, I guess, that's the most important part. You have to clone and this project, and then you can do the steps and have everything in details here, how to do that. Um, this is just our, if you want to give a look, but don't be scared, just try. I think it's, it's, it's supposed to be fun and you should learn and enjoy doing that. That's the plan. The study group is to bring a team together to do that so we can support you in the process and we can move and create new features or learn by doing, I guess, that's uh, the, the main goal for us in the community and also is the main goal um, when you are doing an open source uh, contribution, I guess that's where you are trying to get from it. Ah, and there is a plus, which I think uh, Neha says, like you'd never know who is looking for that. You always get stars from GitHub. If you are a contributor, um, you will see in your GitHub account that you are a contributor to some um, open source projects. And then you can, as much contribution you do, more visibility you have. So it's like you are going to start become more visible to others. There are many, many companies that they ask if you are a contributor to an open source when they are doing interview. So just be aware that's something that you can already use as a experience for um, getting a job. In Women Who Code, we do another extra thing in our website. We also add the contributors for the website itself. So just to, to give you a little extra of visibility, and also, you can see in the GitHub, um, let me just share one more time. Uh, when you go here into the repository, usually you see the contributors. So that's also nice. You see how many people are contributors to this repository. You can see for any all of them. Uh, but basically, that's um, here where you get your visibility and uh, of course in the end there are these achievements that you also can have uh, based on your contribution so that's uh, it's also uh, a really nice uh, out of this thing that you are going to get so I guess that's it if there is no other question or if there is uh, does anyone say anything else No, so let me just check the chat. Uh, one of the requirements for the job posting was the contribution to open source. Yes, that's uh, very true. And as I say, like uh, in Women Who Code, as a volunteer, we also give uh, can give you, um, if you are a contributor, we also can give you, for example, a recommendation saying that uh, you are a contributor and also we can support that. That's also, one of the reasons you can be put on a website that we have many contributors. For example, Neha is still not there, but we, we have to open a pull request to add her as a contributor there. Who wants to, to do it? Please feel free to do it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, please, I can see the QR code. Yes. Um, wait, uh, you have your presentation, Neha? I think I have the form yeah. as well, but if you want to share one more time, then we leave there. I, I share also the Slack where you can join our community and uh, we are creating also the, the post there. Yeah, okay. So, okay. I guess this is visible now. Oh, thank you, everyone. Please, you can reach out to me or to Neha or to Eleonora on Slack or LinkedIn. We will be there to support you, to guide you. We also have a buddy system if you want to be a volunteer in Women Who Code. Um, 
we also want to support you in this journey and to support more and more women in our community. So thank you. I hope you enjoy and see you around, hopefully in the study group. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.